Hello and welcome to the Build a Soil Tropical 10x10 YouTube series. Today I believe we're on episode 3 and we're just getting ramped up so I want to be sure not to miss anything because over the next year this is going to turn into a food forest in here, a tropical food forest. Some house plants and some other fun projects. We'll discuss those as we go one by one but I just want to document the ramp up, show you what's happening with some of the plants. We ordered a few of them off the internet in the middle of winter, which is not ideal for Colorado. And so I want to update you on the lychee tree because I'm happy to report it's coming back to life. But it came in the mail and it was haggard. It's in the back corner. So I want to show you the new growth that's occurring on that because hopefully that means some lychee fruit in our future. And then I want to walk around and just show you all the plants. And we've got a little bit of transplanting to do. So come on in. I'll just start kind of over here. Eventually we hope to just move this rack out of here and have everything filled up with plants. The way that we're doing it right now is We've got, these as our main grow lights. This I'm just gonna take out of here. It was like a Home Depot light for starting seeds. And these are the Magnolia 4. They work really well. Two of these is enough for the whole 10 by 10 when it comes to a tropical tent. I put them both on that side because we have four quadrants, so to speak. Here in quadrant one, we've basically got nothing. A few plants that I just wanted to keep this one out of the main light. So it's getting kind of a, shade, uh, a less intense light. And then this one we had just brought in here. I wanted to get it acclimated. This one I have slated to transplant. And so this is kind of the working area. I've got some soil down here, which we'll talk about in the coming episodes. We've sterilized that soil, which I do not like to do. I don't believe in sterilizing, but I wanted to illustrate a point that I believe you don't need to. I learned that with soil. You don't have to sterilize soil to start your seeds. But a lot of people, when they get rare seeds, they're like, I'm just gonna sterilize it and do all these special steps. So I understand where it comes from. When it comes to cacti, they had mentioned a few people to sterilize the soil. So I'm gonna do, four of these trays with some of these seeds here. And I'm gonna do four of them without sterilizing the soil. From the Pricoceras, whole bunch of cactus seeds. And so we'll be growing these. Some of these have beautiful flowers. Some of them have medicinal compounds. In the coming episode, I've got two that I need to uh, plant from cutting and some seeds. And I'd like to dedicate one episode just to discussing that stuff. So we'll do that in the coming episode soon. Otherwise, I think in the first or second one, I explained that we're using the Niwa Grow Hub to control in here. And that's what's controlling the, um, the environment, at least with the grow lights right now. And it's allowing me to read the temperature and humidity in here. And for now, we've got a standalone humidifier that has its own hygrometer in there. And it's just reading the humidity and it's blasting whenever it, it gets lower. And right now it's on because the tent door is open. The nice thing though, with this many plants, it's not even a lot, but it's starting to make a change. We don't have an exhaust fan with the lights on and the plants growing. They're actually moving the moisture out of the soil as they transpire and they're keeping the humidity in here. This reservoir is very small and it's been almost completely full for days. So I haven't had to adjust it in like a week, which means it's maintaining its own humidity in here. That thing basically only fires when I open the tent and this reads the big drop in humidity and it's like, no, your plants are not gonna be happy and it starts to you know, um, fix it, at least on a commercial one. And this one has got its own build-in and so our goal will be to get off that one, get on this one so that when I open the tent door, we have a little bit more blast and we don't have these dips and spikes that happen. Because right now it's easier to have the door open. We can come in and out and that does kind of lower it. Um, but that's fine. I've got the lights turned down. Everything seems to be happy. So this is the Rex Begonia and we're getting a whole bunch of new growth. You can see coming out. It's ideal to see a whole bunch of new growth like that after the transplant. And so I'd imagine this will just fill up the entire thing. Normally this I believe is on like the forest floor. So I don't want to have it in the bright light. I just put it over here. And this one was just, I think this was out what on the front desk or something. And I grabbed it just because it needed to be watered more regularly and put in this beautiful environment. It's just look at new leaves are unfolding. And this is in the regular cocoa core soil that it came in. Once we put it in some build a soil, it's really going to start to go crazy. I love this. The silver arrow, I think they call it. This one says um, gray philodendron. And that's one of the things about these plants is they have like a billion names for every house plant. So if I get one wrong, correct me, put it in here and let's discuss kind of the topics or the, what we call them. But look at these aerial roots and the humidity in here. You can see the last one that had some and they kind of died off. These ones are holding on way longer and stronger. And I believe because this is now being grown in this environment where it can really fan out in the humidity that's in here. And so I could actually cut that right here take this entire top off and plant another plant between each growth section. But instead we're gonna leave it. We're gonna watch it unfold into another beautiful leaf and watch as it continues. I think that's half the fun is every single day when you have house plants in your house, not only is it like a call to take care of something, which you know could be a burden if you're busy, but I think as I get older, I really enjoy it. 
And around my house, the kids and my wife and myself were always looking at the plants and sending each other pictures and pointing out how the differences are, what the roots look like and the new growth. And it's fun family conversation. And I used to think, hey, if the plant really didn't give you anything, I didn't want to grow it. Like I would only grow food or, or herbs. And now that I see all of the beauty and some of the just intrinsic rewards from taking care of it, I'm coming to really like all the different varieties of house plants. And so we've got some rare ones here that we're going to transplant today. And I'm doing, I'm going to be terrible. I don't know the names of these. And so my wife's friend gave them to us. In fact, I wasn't supposed to take them. I found out they were like a gift for our house and they trans, they drove down here in my cold truck and I could tell they didn't like it. And I'm already so mad at myself, but I think that was just the weakest leaf. And so I want to get them out of here and transplanted. I'm just going to transplant as is. And all three of these will grow together in one container. As they get big, I'll take cuts and I'll bring them back home so that I didn't completely break the rules. I think they'll grow faster in this environment. And if all goes well, we can start sharing some rare house plants with locals. I think it'd be really, really fun. So I will transplant that toward the end of this video, which I'd like to get to very quickly here. And let's just keep going because it's gonna take me an hour if I talk about every plant every time. This one's got lots of new growth and this is like a neon. So it's supposed to be this yellow and light green. That's what we're looking for. I'm not trying to get it to darken up. You can see lots of new growth coming off of every new tip. That's what we're hoping to see after a transplant. If you start to see stagnation of growth and death, a lot of times it's because you've overwatered or the soil that you've put it in is not good. Then what I do is I like to give it a lift. It feels plenty heavy, so I know there's plenty of moisture. I'm not gonna water that one today. This croton here, I did a lift on and it's got plenty of moisture. It's really opening them up. All these leaves are new in the last couple of weeks and it's got new growth about to start another flush. So we'll just keep watching that as it goes, make sure that we have the moisture right. I feel like it might be just slightly overwatered based on the light maybe being blocked by this. And so I really want to make sure that I don't overdo that one and slow it down. In the back, let me see. So excited to see the lettuce filling in. We're going to be able to eat out of here pretty soon. I know it looks like not much now, but the beginning is slow. And all of a sudden this will be full of lettuce and we'll be harvesting out of here. And that's good food. So looking forward to that. I'm also looking here to see if I see any new growth. And it looks like it hasn't shown new growth, but I can tell difference in color. And I see a little tip coming out there. So I'm like, I'm thinking that this gift that we got of this begonia from Peonia from Kid Gaia is going to start to take off and grow. And I just love those angel wings on there. So that's pretty cool. I left this Croton Petra here because this one we transplanted with all the crispy leaves. I was fearful it might die and it died. So I just wanted to keep it to fess up on camera and say that it didn't make it. I could have just killed it without you guys seeing, but I want to just keep everything transparent here. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull this out. In fact, I'm going to use this for a transplant for something else, probably this money tree. So I'll pull it aside and we'll pull that. The very tip stayed green till the end, but it just couldn't push a new leaf. Didn't want to water it. It was already, you know, getting rotten. So we left it. Lots of new growth on this one, this jade. This was in the back office, barely growing. And I wanted to see how big and beefy we can get it. So I just put it in here, left it in the builder soil soil that it was in. It feels pretty heavy, so it doesn't need water, but it just acclimated to the environment, started putting off new growth immediately. The aloe that we left, we decided to leave it. I just don't have another container right now. The aloe from home, it's basically dying, but the roots caught and I see new green growth here. And so I'm anticipating over the next few weeks, that'll start to turn around and grow into new pups. And then we'll just keep it going. So we have both varieties. If they're different, we'll determine as time goes on. And the money tree, I'd like to transplant. I might save that for another day, but I've got this container here. So maybe that'll get done today. Beautiful leaves looking really healthy. A little bit of speckling from some of the foliar spray that I did. But otherwise, I think that um, the sheen and the health I'd imagine once I transplant, the environment's been so good in here, it's, it's drank more than I'm used to. Like when that thing was on my desk for the last year, it just, you don't have to do anything. When you put it in this environment, it's like calling it to grow, which means it needs moisture and food and all those things. So it'll do much, much better in that container. Two rubber trees, and I wanna show you an example of a really healthy one. Post-transplant with new growth coming off, beautiful leaves, this leaves about to open, new growth down here, new growth out the side everywhere. It's just putting out. That's after transplant from the last couple of weeks. This one has been stuck in this little tiny container that dries out pretty quickly. And I noticed that it had some mealybug or scale. You may have seen it before. I'm going to see if I can find one on here. I'd like to show you how I treat it because that one had it too from the office and now it has none and I actually used no spray, which I brought a few sprays in here to show you what you could use. Okay. So here's what we're looking for. See this damage on the leaf and see how there's some little white speckles on there. That is mealybug or scale. And so I just scrape it off with my hand and I get rid of every bit of it so that there's none on the plant. And then I go around to any leaf that's like curled. And a lot of times you'll be able to find them in the edges here along the side. 
And so I'm just seeing if I can identify any. It seems like once they got in this proper humid environment and I was watering it regularly, the plant was able to defend itself a little bit better. And I really didn't see a proliferation, but I wanted to document it on camera. So to see that little tiny speck right there, that's scale. And if you get them bad, they'll be like little fluffs of cotton. It looks like little white, fluffy, little woolly mammoths, like climbing all over everything. It's crazy. And they're like a scale, like a crustacean, like locked on there. And so sometimes you got to scrape it off. And I'm just going to scrape that with my nail and you can see how it opened up. So that's the scale. I want to get that off and manual when it's a really mild infestation like this is all you need. Now I'm going to scan the whole stock. There's a little tiny dot right there. That's probably a baby, that white dot, it'll grow. So if you miss the babies and then you'll have more again soon, but manually you can just take them off. I'll look the whole stock over. I'll do a really good investigation. There's one little tiny, it's hard to tell, but there's a little fleck right there. I'm going to scrape that off because that's scale. It's like living inside the leaf, sucking it dry right there. Okay, that's it. And I can come back and check on this every single day so that I don't get any transfer to any other plants. But it was so mild. Like there's a little speckle of white right there that I really don't feel like it's gonna be a problem and I'm removing it all right now before I put them with the rest. I have it kind of, I had it quarantined earlier away from the rest. And then if I'm really fearful, I do have some concoctions that I can use. We've got neem oil, this one's wild harvest from India. And the difference in a lot of neem oil is based on the alkaloids. There are some active properties, azadiractin, nimbin, salin, and all these things that come in neem oil. And it's been part of Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years. But when it comes to plants, um, the, the insects, it's it oil, so it suffocates them, it stops them from eating, it stops them from laying eggs, it stops them from doing many different parts of their life, which basically removes them from your plant, but in a very safe way. Neem oil's gotten, kind of gotten a bad name. It's a little bit oily, obviously, so you have to emulsify it. And we'll talk about that in future episodes. But the build a soil neem oil we get from India, it has really high occurring natural amounts of those compounds, where other neem oils extract the component azadiractin, inject it into the oil and formulate a higher count neem oil. And I don't think that's nearly as effective or safe. This regular cold press wild harvested neem oil, we like the best. I emulsify that with a wetting agent. You can just use soap, but I think what's gentler on plants is plant compounds. And this is from the soap bark tree. This is an extract of the Kuyaha tree. And this makes, this will emulsify this oil immediately. I put like an ounce of this into a gallon of water and warm water preferably. And I put like a teaspoon of this and it just turns into like when you shake a salad dressing and you have the oil and vinegar and you shake it and they blend together. It looks kind of creamy almost. That's, that'll create that emulsification. Then you can just spray your plants down with your sprayer. Um, I don't have time to do it today, but we'll go over IPM in the future. So if you like that stuff, we have lots of topics when it comes to house plants and taking care of them. And then we have EM5, which is like a homemade gardening concentrate we sell here. And you can make similar stuff at home. EM5, this is organic vinegar, organic essential oils, organic alcohol. We went to very great lengths to find the premium ingredients, but you can make something similar just from home recipes online. And these work great for cleaning your plants. And then we also have Tweetment, which is the original enzyme-based plant wash. And enzymes are part of the insect process where they use enzymes to cause themselves to molt and go through different life stages. So we can use that enzyme to cause them to go through that process when they're not ready. And so it's really great with pests. And if you go to their website, they have a pest to safe instead of pesticide PDF report. And they talk about the benefits of neem oil. They talk about homemade sprays and how they found this. And there's a whole book on integrated pest management for free. You can get through safe solutions really good content and w when you know like you know like you've made a whole bunch of pest stuff before the organic way you know when someone knows what they're talking about and the report here has a lot of great information in it so that's a good free resource we are getting the melons to finally get up and kind of start to get bigger leaf and vine out so i'm probably gonna just keep this one and let it go we're not in any danger of these you know getting overgrown into each other so i'm gonna let it go a little longer before i pull the other two and keep my one main crop I will, I do see a little bit of holy basil coming in, but it's been really fickle. It's like trying to grow in and then I water and it kind of, some of it dies. And so best case scenario, some of it starts to grow through and we have what we want. And then we start to fill this with more companion plants so we can keep that diversity going. This is the lychee tree. And so I did want to point out all these leaves turned a healthier green than they were when we got it, although they're still beat up. So that was my first cue that maybe this wasn't dying. Maybe it was turning around. And then I would shake it and none of the other leaves would drop where the first two days one more leaf every day was kind of dropping and it was in a decline. 
and it acclimated to the environment and I started to see what I thought was new growth. And so if you look right here, you can see that little tip. There's one there with a brand new little leaf on it, a tip there and a tip at the top. That's all new growth that's been continuing each day very, very slowly. And then I can see new bud growth all over here. There's a long, that's the biggest tip that's grown out right there. And then along this side, there's all new little growth coming out. I don't know if it's gonna be a quick turnaround over the next month and it'll start to elongate once those leaves connect, you know, it's exponential, or whether it's just gonna take a year. I probably should have grown it from seed, but this is part of the 10 by 10 experience. We're gonna grow a tropical jungle indoors. We're gonna have some setbacks. Part of me is really excited just to have a fruit tree in here to begin the journey. Coffee plants, this one's starting to look a lot better. You'll notice a lot less discolored leaves. These ones that were kind of brown are coming out green now and really looking like a nice sheen to them. Pretty soon, all the old leaves will be gone as it's acclimated to the new environment. There'll be nothing but new growth on here and the whole plant will look beautiful, but it's taken its sweet time. And part of me wishes I would have grown this from seed as well, but it would have taken a year to get here. So if it takes a few months to turn around, it's still time well spent. Earth box, I've not started bottom watering yet. I don't wanna overwater these while these get new leaf on there and get comfortable. At that point, this is plenty of soil for their speed of growth. I'll eventually, hopefully get to start bottom watering when they start producing fruit and really growing faster. Right now I just do a lift. It feels plenty moist, like it feels heavy enough. So I think that's good for the day. The cover crop is going in as a companion plant. And I think that'll help get some roots commingling with the plant, make sure moisture is moving, make sure that there's biology in there. And these are cover crops, so they fix nitrogen. Eventually I'll chop and drop and that decay will turn into worm food. That'll then feed these coffee plants that love that rich organic matter. So that's part of the process. Uh, this one I left as another failure. So I just left it, it's been dying here. I wanna show you the Zanzibar. My wife mentioned that it was like nasty and it was rotten and we needed to transplant it, try to save it. And I love that attitude, uh, but this one didn't make it. I just, you can pull it out, it's all rotten in here. And the, I mean, rove beetles are just running out of the hole. So we're gonna use this to transplant something else in. I don't think it ever really took, it was basically dead when we transplanted it. So that's where we're at with that one. Toss that to the side. New growth. Look at this, this is the flamingo lily. This is a whole new leaf that it's put out in here in its new environment. And it's starting to get other new leaves. And then look at it's getting some of these flowers actually pushing out. So this is its first one in this environment. I see new tips here and look at that aerial root that's pushing out. I love seeing those roots. I don't know why it's so cool and the humidity in here, how they push them out. And then obviously the other coffee plant is starting to do better. So it's slower, but lots of new growth, finally getting bigger leaves at every single growth tip. So I'm really optimistic that these will be fully bushed out soon. But what I got excited about was this one. This is the Circestus. This is the Mirabilis Circestus, Circestus Mirabilis. I think on the jungle floor in South Africa. And for whatever reason, it's really hard to get. It's a rare plant. I do like these aerial roots and I do see them growing much longer each day. That one's fully connected. This one's growing. I can see, see that new pink root right there, that red. And then I'm seeing new growth for the first time right here. And so after we transplanted with a rare plant, like that's what you're waiting for. You're just hoping that you didn't kill it. And you start to see new growth and you're like, yes, I made it. That means all I have to do is continue on this trend here. I didn't overwater, like everything's gonna be doing well. I have it sitting in low light and I think it likes it, but I will play around with different spots in here. This geranium, it's starting to grow, but it's been a little bit funky after transplant. It's just been kind of hanging out. So I think it went through its first batch of water a little bit too quick, then I didn't catch up and I just put it in the lower light to make it easy. This is another rescue house plant. It kind of got frozen and it's got some new growth. Some of it did die from the trip in here where it was like frozen and it was being a little bit, it was overwatered at I think city market where she grabbed it. Just one more house plant. Looks like the cats got to it. <laughs> Anyways, half the fun, right? Wondering what the heck happened. So that one will probably up pot into something big. We just really want to turn it into a jungle as soon as possible. That pretty much wraps up the walkthrough. What I'd like to do since I addressed all the plants in here is do the transplanting really quick. That way we don't slow it down. I get it done. And then every day that passes, we get to see it grow bigger from its transplant instead of me saying, hey, I'll do that tomorrow. Just like life, the garden teaches us these lessons where we can't often put off these things for too long where it's like nothing's ever gonna change. But if you front load a lot of that work, you get to reap what you sow. You get to enjoy the beauty and the benefit from it all. So if you haven't thought about setting up a tent like this and you've got some extra space, Maybe this will replace that million dollar greenhouse dream that you have and you can do it right now and it doesn't have to be that expensive. And you can go somewhere where it's 10 degrees out right now in Colorado. You can come in here and it's humid and warm and we're growing fruit and coffee and house plants and like it's a sanctuary. But let's do some transplanting. I'm gonna move this one, that's ideal. You can tell, look at how like these leaves are curled from having the mealy bug, smaller leaves, not nearly as big. 
this is the difference of what uh, the right amount of really good soil can do. Now this was in good soil, but it was a small amount that was drying out often in the back office without the right environment or light. We give it the right environment, it's gonna turn into this. And so that's the goal is to bring them to peak health. So let's get this transplant done. I've got some soil right here. These roots will grab the side and I don't wanna pull the stalk of the plant out. So I just break it up like this, being pretty gentle, and that should allow it to free from the side so I can pull. Look at all those roots. Okay, so now it'll be really happy in a, in a proper container size here. Making a little mess and then we'll just sweep it up. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna dump the rest of the soil in there. Take out any of the airspace around there. I compress it like that. It's got just enough drainage. This plant's gonna just love this soil. So there we go. There's one transplant down. I've got some Build-A-Soil light. I'm gonna grab a bag right here. Beautiful. So look at all the life in there. See how it's kind of white? This is along the edge where it clumped together. And so you see all the biology that's in the soil from the premium compost that we use and the amendments. Oh, it smells good. The moisture is good. I'm going to have to go over there and tell the guys they're doing a great job. We're really trying to get moisture perfect on every batch and quality control. Make sure that we're doing constant testing of heavy metals, constant testing of the nutrient profile, making sure the ingredients we add are, are consistent. And it's just, we're, we're really hitting a stride right now. The soil's amazing. Okay. And then let's just see what we're working with. I don't like these little clear cups because you can see it gets algae on the roots. And I think that's less than ideal. And I want to be gentle here. I don't want to rip all the roots. So let's see what I can do to help them along. These hydrogen clay pebbles, just to keep a gap in there for water. I don't want to cut any roots. For my hand, the knife's pretty sharp, so I might be able to just cut the bottom off here. I don't want to cut the root at all, so I'm just being as gentle as I can right now. There we go. Did it! Now, this one looks like it's not rooted. I got two, okay. So this one has a little nub on it. So I can actually separate these, dang it. I think because this oil is ready, I'm just going to put it in here. So I'll set this one down for now. And then this one was just set in here. I thought they were all rooted in here. That's so why I was like, how am I going to separate them? But I'm just going to put them in the soil. I don't want to waste my time trying to figure it out. Now let's see. Okay, this one wasn't even rooted either, but there's little tiny aerial roots flying out of there already. So I think they're going to be quick to root. Set that one down. This one is the fully rooted one that's in here. And look at that. It's like mossy and a little bit over wet in here. Okay. And then this one's already got a root nub right there. And so I'm gonna bury it up to that point at least and make sure that out of this side we get the other plant. And then as these grow, I'll just take cuttings off them and I'll put them in separate planters. Okay, that's it, excited about that. I'll put them over here where they're out of the direct light and can kind of acclimate. I'm gonna clean up this mess. I was going to water in a little bit of the Kuyaha and a little bit of our root wise, let me grab it. This has all the beneficial biology that would be in healthy farm soil. And so I oftentimes when I fresh transplant will inoculate. I'm gonna clean up in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of this in the water next time. That already had plenty of water and none of the other ones in here, we really needed water today. So I'm not going to do this and over water just cause I wanna put it in. So I'll wait a little bit. Next time I'll get some root wise and some Q and then we'll show you how far the plants have come on the next episode. And we'll talk about cactuses. We've got more fruit trees to order. If you've got comments, if you've got plants that you think we should be growing, any of that stuff, we're just kicking this party off, let us know. Otherwise, subscribe, like, tell your friends. And until next time, I'll see you guys on the next Build a Soil YouTube video.